Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get an additional 16 XLR outputs out of your Behringer X32 or Midas M32. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, what I'm talking about is the Midas stage box called the DN4816-0. This is a brand new Stage Connect stage box line from Midas. Now, the current mixer that we have that's available to use Stage Connect is the Behringer Wing. And what Stage Connect is, it allows us to take 32 channels and send it down one single XLR line. Now, for longer distances, you'll want to use a data cable for that. But but what it allows us to do is send up to 32 channels down a multiple sets of these devices into the Behringer wing. Now, what I'm talking about here today is the X32 and the M32. Now, how is this going to be helpful? Well, this unit happens to have an ultranet input on the box, which allows us to take ultranet in and convert it to 16 XLR outs. And that lets us use the alternate output of the X32 or the M32 to be able to route an additional 16 outputs via this. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this unit here. So what we have on the front is our 16 XLR outs, and we also have a power light and an activity light to show that the connection is good. It is one RU, and if we flip this over to the back, we then see that we have a DC input for power. So this is a powered unit. It does need to be connected to power. We also have our USB connection, which is going to be for updating firmware on this unit. We then have our ultranet. So we have an ultranet input and an ultranet output. So our input allows us to take 16 channels of ultranet, put it into this, and it will convert it to the output on the XLRs. Now there's also an output of ultranet here that would be available to us via our stage connect. Now our stage connect has a master and a slave. And I'm going to be talking about those in a different video of how to get that actually connected up. We then have our mode switch. So we have master, we have slave, and we have alternate. So if this is going to be the primary unit, then we would have that on master. If it's going to be a slave unit later in the chain, we would have it on slave. But in our case, we want it to be from the alternate. So I'm going to change the switch over to alternate. The next thing that we have is our output mode, and I'm going to be covering that in a different video later. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to connect this up with a shielded Ethernet cable. So I have my shielded Ethernet cable here, and I'm going to plug this into the output of the X32's Ultranet. If you have an M32, you can go ahead and plug it into that. Additionally, if you have a DL16, DL32, S16, S32, any of those stage boxes, you can also link it from this cable out of that Ultranet port. And then the other side is going to go into the input port on our DN4816-0. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those up right now. So once you connect the ultranet, you will notice that this light will take a little bit of time to turn on. And that's just because it's taking its time connecting. And as we can see that that light is red, which means there is a connection on this now. So we have the ability of sending anything out of our ultranet routing into this. And we then have all of our 16 ultranet outs here from the board. And as long as that light is red, we are on a good connection. Now, as far as cable length goes, Behringer's published spec on Ultranet sends is 75 meters, which is 246 feet. So that's a long distance that you can send. That does need to be a shielded Cat5 cable, though. So I have not tested to see if it can go farther than that, but the published spec from Behringer is 75 meters. So you can keep that in mind when you are doing all of your routing here. So let's go ahead and talk about the routing portion of how do we actually get 16 additional outputs out of this board into this Stage Connect box. So go ahead and hit routing, and then I'm going to have you page select all the way over until you get to P16. Now here is where we have our additional 16 outputs that we can select from. 
So on our P16 output, we can select from our main left, right, mono center, any of our 16 mix buses, any of our six matrices. We also have all of the direct outs. So we have 32 channels of direct outs. We also have our eight auxes, as well as our effects returns. And then we also have our monitor and talkback. So we have basically every channel that's available to us inside the X32 is able to be routed out of this. So if you were needing to send additional outputs of, say, a record bus, you can do that. So we have all of our P16 outputs here. So we have 1 through 16, and all of these can be selected in different ways. So if you were wanting to send a mix bus, then we can go ahead and select that and we'll have it post fader so that when I'm adjusting the volume here on the mix bus, it will be adjusting it on the output of our DN48160. Additionally, we could do a direct out of a channel and have any of our taps available to us. Now, the only thing that we have still as a limitation on the X32 is the amount of buses that we have internally on this console. There are 16 mix buses, period. So you can't expand to get more mix buses. So if you were wanting to try and have, say, 32 outputs of monitors, you can't do that. So you are still limited to the 16 mono mix buses or eight stereo mix buses that are built into the console. Now, if you were wanting to get creative and start using some of the matrix sends, you definitely could. But the only way to send to the matrix is either through the main left, right, or the mix buses. So you can't go directly from a channel to the matrix. So that's still going to be a limitation for you on the X32 and the M32. Now, as far as latency goes on this new DN16.0, the latency is comparable to the same latency that's coming out of the XLR outputs on the back of our X32 or M32. So if we compare our XLR output of the back of this board to the output of the stage connect box that's coming from the ultranet output, into the stage connect box and out of the XLR, they are the same. Smart for me only measures up to 0 0.01 milliseconds. So I'm not able to measure anything faster than that. So as far as I can tell, there's no difference between sending out an XLR on the back of our board versus sending out an XLR on our DN4816-0. Now, if you are planning on connecting the stage connect box into the alternate out of one of your stage boxes that are up on stage, and you maybe had multiple consoles on the same set of AES-50, then you could actually send the outputs of, say, your monitor console or your front of house console out to the alternate output and then to this stage connect box. So for instance, if I had this as my monitor console and then my front of house console was out there, and that front of house console is connected to my AES-50B port on this mixer here, and then all of the stage boxes are connected on the AES-50A port on this console. Then what I can do is I can actually route my outputs 1 through 16 from that console into this, and then send it from this out to the alternate output on my stage box so let's go ahead and route that real quick. So I'm going to have you go to routing, and then we're going to page all the way over to AES50A. Now what we're going to do is we are going to pull my outputs 1 through 16 from the AES50 send coming from my front of house console into this. Now that means that would be showing up on AES50B 1 through 16. Now the alternate outputs of our stage boxes by default, if you're in mode one, two, or three, would you be showing up on 33 through 48, which means that I need to go to my 33 through 48 on AES50A because that's where I have my stage boxes connected to. And I'm going to go and select AES50B 1 through 8 on 33 through 40, and then AES50B 9 through 16 on 41 through 48. So that means that the console that's connected into the B port on this console is then having its outputs sent to the alternate output of the stage boxes, which means that that's then plugged into this DN4816, and then all of the 16 outputs are then routed out of this. Now, this is going to be super helpful if you're wanting to have 
the same stage boxes for front of house and monitors, but then you're just needing to get 16 additional outputs for your monitors. And that would allow you to have all 16 outputs available to you directly from the stage boxes from this console, but route all of your 16 outputs from your other console via the stage connect box. So I think that that's going to be a very helpful and useful piece of gear for anyone that's running multiple consoles on the same network. I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below. Also, if there's an idea that you have of a video that you want me to make, drop that in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments to find ideas of videos to make for you in the future. If you haven't already, check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Otherwise, thank you so much.